So welcome to the uh, 25th lecture of surface engineering. Uh, at the moment we are discussing in the last couple of lectures about uh, various approaches possible for uh, hardening the surface primarily of steel. We started discussion with uh, various mechanical deformation uh, aided processes like shot pinning or shock pinning or laser shock pinning. Uh, wherein the entire process was only based on uh, certain deformation or plastic zone induced onto the surface. Uh, uh, then we talked about uh, flame or induction hardening where we used thermal activation heating through uh, uh, one of the two either of the two possible ways of heating flame or induction. Uh, in both the cases one thing was in common though one was mechanical the other one was thermal. Uh, process, but one thing was common, the surface chemistry we did not change. So essentially they were surface hardening processes without changing the composition of the surface. Now we are going to discuss another set of uh, surface uh, hardening exercises which essentially is not just, which, which is certainly not mechanical, which is thermal, but to be more precise which is thermochemical in nature for, the de for obtaining the desired uh, aim. So this process is called carburizing and uh, herein we uh, actually uh, if you recall in the previous lecture we said uh, the steel that we generally use uh, will have should have a minimum uh, content of about 0.4 percent carbon 0 0.3 to 0 0.6 or 0.8 typically more than 0.4 weight percent carbon in the steel. Uh, because we do not change the chemistry and that is the minimum amount of carbon we need to be able to uh, convert the surface into martensite and that martensite should develop adequate strength uh, or hardness and in order to get that you require a minimum amount of 0.4 percent carbon. Compared to that if you now look at this carburizing process as I said this is a thermochemical process. So here again if you refer to the steel part of the phase diagram iron cementite diagram then this is the eutectoid point. Usually this kind of treatment is applied to mild steel low carbon steel. So now we are talking about a range which typically would be about 0.1 to at the most 0.3 weight percent carbon. So purposely we are choosing a stock which has lower carbon so that the component that we are going to treat will actually have a core which will be uh, not only ferritic or ferritoperlitic, but because of low carbon will actually be much more softer and eventually provide higher toughness for the entire component. So this portion we purposely want to remain as soft and that is why we require a carbon content which should be uh, sort of uh, in this range. But in order to get requisite hardness or optimal hardness of martensite at the surface, we already know that you require carbon content which is uh, certainly more than 0.4 percent carbon. So now we need to enrich the surface with carbon. The process of carburizing essentially is uh, a technique by which we can um, enrich the surface with carbon by solid state diffusion. So we do not take the stock to temperature above melting temperature, it is entirely a solid state process. Now we again need to go to a temperature which has to be higher than the AC3 temperature. Why is it so? Because we want the entire microstructure of the steel to be austenite. And why austenite? Because austenite we all know is FCC face centered cubic structure and the maximum uh, carbon uh, solubility uh, or the limit of uh, carbon solubility in austenite is much higher is highest uh, in all the possible solid phases of um, steel and that would be typically um, if, if, I, if I draw it afresh then this is the steel portion we are talking about and this is the uh, eutectic isotherm beginning. So this is the portion uh, 
which is approximately 2 percent carbon. So, you can pack in as high as up to 2 percent of carbon uh, in the interstitials of austenite, not in ferrite. In ferrite, the maximum solubility is only 0 0.025 percent and that too at the eutectoid temperature. At room temperature, of course, we have nearly 0 at room temperature phase is uh, uh, ferrite and ferrite typically the room temperature solubility will be very, very low typically let us say 0 0.007 weight percent. So, in order to pack maximum possible amount of carbon, we need to go to austenite and we cannot afford to do that exercise in the ferritic zone. So, that is why first of all we choose low carbon stock, so that the core remains inherently soft and eventually uh, provide the required toughness, but on the other hand the surface should be enriched in carbon and for that reason the surface we want up to a certain depth to go to austenitic range, so that during diffusion solid state diffusion it can acquire carbon uh, which can be usually we, we target somewhere in this range up to about say somewhere around 0.4 to point uh, maybe 8 maybe up to about 1 percent carbon. So, typically in this range, but uh, one can go theoretically to as high as 2 percent carbon. So, the process is the same as I said uh, enriching the surface with carbon, we heat and then take the surface up to a controlled depth to austenite and then subsequently we uh, employ a separate heat treatment to convert the carbon enriched surface to go to austenitic range and then subsequently be quenched to martensite. What we get in turn is a strong very resistant surface and the stock to begin with will be uh, ideally a low carbon steel um, which is used for various uh, manufacturing processes. Now, when you do carburizing then with time actually uh, how uh, the depth of uh, carbon penetration changes. So, this is A is uh, up to 6 hours and B is up to 12 hours. So, by employing another 6 more hours you can increase the depth of carbon penetration typically from about uh, let us say 3 400 micrometer to almost uh, close to a millimeter. So, the carbon penetration from the surface so, if this is if this is a percentage carbon and if this is depth z, uh, so this is the surface and this is towards the interior, the carbon diffusion profile will be like this. So, up to a certain depth, the our idea is that if this is the desired depth, so within this uh, desired depth region, one should have at least the uh, minimum amount of carbon. So, this cutoff point is typically about 0.4 percent carbon and this is the depth from the surface which has would have acquired the required amount of carbon which can be more than 0.4 percent carbon. So, as I said this is a thermochemical process diffusion controlled. Uh, we start with a low carbon steel and uh, which may have other alloying elements but uh, we actually uh, produce carbon penetration up to a certain depth which can be um, a millimeter or certainly less than uh, 1 or 2 millimeters, but if needed we can go even up to 6 millimeter. So, the effective case depth can be as high as 6 millimeter. So, in order to introduce carbon to the surface we need carbon containing or carbonaceous environment and expose the material to somewhere around 880 to 1000 degrees centigrade, because that is the temperature range where everything is austenite and solubility of carbon in austenitic stage is higher. Um, all uh, carburizing treatment is to be followed up with a separate uh, heat treatment called quenching process, but and, and even tempering process, but that we will discuss some other time. So, what is important for us is to know that we are exposing to a fairly high temperature above 900 or so and hold for a certain period of time. So, both temperature of heating and the time of holding both are very important because the whole thing is diffusion controlled and we know diffusivity is a function of both temperature and uh, not time, 
but the diffusivity is a function of temperature, but time also uh, for a given uh, at a given temperature, uh, time and temperature overall will determine what is the depth of carbon penetration. So, if this is the surface after carburizing and this is towards the core. So, this kind of a, a gradation of microstructure we see. So, typically this is where we have much larger carbon, this is where we have um, uh, carbon content which is in between and this is where the carbon content reduces and uh, uh, we actually can uh, get uh, I am sorry, I, I, I am sorry, I made a mistake here. This is the core region and this is the surface region. So, this is the uh, so called hyper eutectoid zone and this is the hypo eutectoid zone low carbon. So, what you are seeing this bright regions are the uh, ferritic regions and these are perlitic regions. So, this is a ferritoperlitic core which is what we had at the beginning and this is the mixture of ferrite and uh, uh, this is the mixture of uh, this is the region where you have introduced more amount of carbon. So, the volume fraction of uh, area fractions of ferrite perlite is changing and uh, so let us say typically this would be uh, in the range of if this is 0.2 percent carbon this would be typically about 0.4 percent carbon and this may be uh, more than 0.6 percent carbon and this certainly is the hyper eutectoid range. So, obviously, you are talking about a carbon range which is greater than 0.8 percent carbon. So, we create compositional gradation and hence microstructural gradation uh, after uh, carburizing treatment. This is a vacuum carburizing furnace typically used for carburizing, but gas carburizing not the pack carburizing that we are uh, talking about. And these are the typical components which are used for uh, which are subjected to such uh, um, uh, carburizing treatments. So, it can be a long shaft, a cam shaft or gear wheel or a ball bearing assembly and so on and so forth. So, the carbon profile and the penetration depth they will depend upon the time of exposure, the carbon activity in the environment which can be uh, uh, solid or solid converted into gas and the temperature that we employ. Of course, the base composition of the steel is also important. So, we uh, need to expose for a certain period of time to build the required amount of carbon potential and uh, at a, a, a thermal temperature that we subject the stock to. This process as I said is based upon uh, creating a carbon rich environment and that will primarily uh, depend upon the ratio of carbon monoxide to carbon dioxide. So, this gas mixture ratio determines what is the carbon activity in the uh, furnace which uh, is what is going to dictate what would be the depth of penetration of carbon into the surface. Uh, typical applications uh, as I already mentioned could be on uh, the bearing assembly, the gears, the cutting heads, uh, the shear blades, even shafts or cams and so on and so forth. But these are all to begin with they should have very low carbon. So, mild steel 0.2 or so and the case depth can be a, to the to the maximum uh, something like about 5, 6 millimeter. We will come back to this discussion of this uh, diagram later because in this discourse we are only talking about the carbon rising and not the subsequent heat treatment. Once you have completed the heat treatment typically, but even after carburizing treatment this would be the carbon diffusion profile and eventually this is the kind of a hardness profile that you can generate and because of the Martensitic transformation you can also create residual compressive stress up to a certain depth uh, below the surface. So, this would be the range from the surface which will be uh, developing residual compressive stress, but remember this kind of profile you can generate after the heat treatment that follows up carburizing treatment. So, this is the cross section of, a, of the tooth of a gear and this explains exactly what we are trying to do by way of this carburizing. Please remember in case of uh, induction hardening or flame hardening uh, 
you would have also got a very similar cross-sectional profile, but the difference was that there the, the uh, steel, the stock that we subjected to must have had already adequate amount of carbon. So, the initial composition of the steel must be already uh, uh, having more than 0.4 percent carbon, but here we are dealing with a material which is uh, having in the core to begin with only about 0.2 percent carbon. But the surface that we develop this bright region white region that you are seeing uh, as the contour line this bright region is highly carbon enriched and is it can be actually um, close to eutectoid or even hyper eutectoid. So, we see a compositional gradient from the surface towards the interior and this gradient gives you predominantly martensitic martens, martensite plus perlite and then subsequently uh, ferritoperlitic microstructure. So, that is kind of a, a desired uh, scenario that we want to develop through this case hardening process. Uh, what we actually want to achieve uh, is to not to sacrifice ductility, we want to retain ductility, we want to retain toughness but we want to increase the hardness and strength of the surface. So, this is a tall order to have this kind of a combination. How do we do it? So, in some cases this is called pack carburizing or even box carburizing because you actually take a cast iron box like this, then this is your component and this is your component and you pack it with uh, solid substances which are essentially. Uh, uh, graphite and then uh, uh, calcium carbonate or barium carbonate or some other activators and we may have also certain other oxides. So, what is uh, most important is this activated charcoal, this is the main source of carbon, but please remember that if you use it we will come to that in the next very slides, but let me just tell you that we need to seal up these portions here because we do not want fresh entry of um, air into it and we expose this whole thing inside the furnace. So, it goes inside the furnace and then we heat up to an isothermal condition uh, which could be as I said anything from about uh, close to 800 to 1000 degree depending on what the initial temperature uh, initial carbon content of the steel is. So, in pack carburizing uh, what is important again let me repeat is that we are beginning with low carbon stock. This is the kind of uh, arrangement that this is the box which is packed with this particular let us say shaft and uh, with uh, packed with this carbon aceous materials and the typical um, reaction which is responsible for carbon diffusion is uh, like this where uh, carbon reacts with carbon monoxide and uh, deposits in the process in the cooler region uh, carbon onto the surface, but the difference is that this carbon is so called activated carbon. So, this activated state is very important uh, for carbon to diffuse in and schematically if this is carbon enriched region then this is how the carbon atoms are able to penetrate to the surface and actually diffuse further down and reach up to a certain depth. So, they are not substituting an existing iron alpha iron atom, but they are going into the interstices, but when one interstice one interstitial position is occupied it immediately creates a fair amount of strain fill around. So, that the subsequent spots are not necessarily filled up immediately. On the other hand depending upon the time that you allow this time essentially determines to what depth you actually can expect carbon to diffuse in. We also have seen that the carbon diffusion profile decays with depth. So, as we go lower and lower the carbon content decreases. Obviously, surface which is exposed to the carbon rich environment will actually have the maximum amount of carbon and the way below down inside you will have the least amount of carbon. So, this is how the carbon profile diffuse uh, changes or decreases and we have already uh, discussed that the typical case depth could be a few millimeter maximum 6 millimeter and the cutoff point here should be 0.4 percent carbon. 
Now, what is the reaction that actually takes place inside? It's not the charcoal which is the one which actually starts the process. It's actually this activator, barium carbonate, which dissociates at 900 or 800 degrees centigrade and uh, dissociates into barium oxide and carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide now reacts with activated charcoal or graphite and converts this carbon dioxide into carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide when it comes in contact with steel or iron at high temperature, then it actually decomposes and dissociates to uh, deposit activated carbon. So, atomic carbon. Now, this is very important that this is in an activated state, not in a molecular state. Because unless it is in an activated state, it cannot easily get adsorbed and subsequently absorbed by diffusion. So, what is important is uh, that the carbon at the surface is initially uh, goes through uh, initially gets uh, adsor adsorbed and then finally get absorbed by diffusion. So, we must have sufficient solubility for uh, absorption and this is why exactly we always go to the austenitic range and then do not do it in the ferritic range. We already uh, learned that uh, austenite can give you can actually uh, dissolve as much as up to point up to uh, 2 weight percent of carbon. The temperature range would be that varies depending upon the stock that you are dealing with its initial composition and the depth to which you want to go and so on and so forth. Uh, and then uh, so this is important here that the so called case depth that we are talking about will be a function of time and temperature. So, at a given isothermal temperature the diffu diffusion coefficient as we all know uh, is uh, a function of is proportional to the uh, temperature. So, so, this is the factor which determines what is the effective diffusion coefficient and once we know the. So, this k basically is uh, proportional to diffusion coefficient and for a given uh, temperature since the d is fixed for a given temperature. So, what we now need is to uh, determine uh, what is what should be the possible depth and this possible depth is actually proportional to the square of the temperature. Because it, deri it is derived from the relationship uh, which is somewhat like this. So, d is constant then obviously, the depth case depth essentially depends upon the square of time. So, higher the time higher will be the depth of penetration, but I would like to re-emphasize the fact that uh, in order to enrich the surface with so high carbon and achieve a depth up to about 1.5, 2, 3, maximum 6 millimeter, we should have sufficient carbon potential in the environment and that is possible through this kind of a reaction where barium carbonate dissociates gives barium oxide and carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide reacts with activated charcoal creates carbon monoxide, carbon monoxide when it comes in contact with the uh, hot surface of steel it dissociates and deposits activated carbon and this activated carbon now gets adsorbed and then subsequently absorbed into the stock by way of diffusion. And the depth of diffusion will be determined by the time the square root of time at a given isothermal temperature and diffusion will be dictated by the so called diffusion coefficient at that particular temperature. So, now it is time to uh, recapitulate uh, what all we have discussed. So, as I said right at the beginning compared to uh, uh, shot pinning or shock pinning or laser pinning and so on, uh, this is different process where we are taking not only the help of heating or thermal effect but also we are changing the chemistry. So, this is a thermochemical process compared to the other processes that we have discussed. Then this whole, pro whole uh, technique is aimed at enriching the surface with carbon and we just heard that how do we do that. We actually take charcoal, we take car barium carbonate, we dissociate certain reactions take place in the vapor state uh, 
and eventually carbon gets deposited in the activated form and that activated carbon diffuses inside. The diffusion profile is actually uh, decaying from the surface, uh, highest at the surface and then gradually decreases. The typical process parameters of course would be the activity of carbon uh, that we create, uh, the temperature, the time, the surface condition uh, and of course the initial carbon content of the steel. Um, we, this is one important point that I need to uh, address here. Uh, if we basically can divide the entire uh, range of steel for all engineering applications into two main parts, the so-called hypoeutectoid and hypereutectoid. So again, if you refer to the steel part of the diagram, then um, so below the eutectoid point, everything is called hypoeutectoid and above the eutectoid point in terms of composition is called hypereutectoid. So, if we are dealing with hypoeutectoid, then this is the temperature band we target to achieve. While treating hypereutectoid steel, we do not necessarily go above the ACM. Here we go above AC3, but for hypereutectoid, we do not go above ACM. That is purely because the temperature here is fairly high, but already if the Carb if the steel let us say is 1.2 percent carbon or 1.1 percent carbon. Generally, these kind of steels are never subjected to uh, carburizing treatment, but for whatever reason if you are doing anything with hypereutectoid, you would rather heat only above the eutectoid and not necessarily go above ACM. Because above ACM, you first have to go to very high temperature. There could be subsequent large thermal shock or thermal distortion uh, during quenching. More importantly, because of exposure to much higher temperature, you actually can uh, undergo uh, undesirable amount of oxidation at high temperature. But the most important thing is that when you go above the eutectoid temperature for hypereutectoid steel, you already have 90 percent of the volume converted into austenite. If you apply lever rule for 1.2 percent carbon steel, you can easily see about 80 to 90 percent of the microstructure is already austenite and the remaining part will be cementite. Cementite is a hard phase. So, even if you retain 10, 20 percent of cementite in the microstructure, it is not going to do harm. Rather, it is going to provide you more uh, hardness or more um, it is going to make the whole uh, microstructure stronger. But your main intention is to convert austenite into martensite. And if you already have 80 percent of the microstructure in austenitic state, even though you have heated only just above AC 1 and not above ACM, you better as well stay at that temperature range and be happy with 80, 90 percent of austenite instead of trying to go all the way up above ACM and incur the uh, disadvantages of spending more fuel, spending more money on heating. Uh, exposing to more oxidation uh, situ oxidative situation and also incur a greater amount of thermal shock while quenching. So, and the time that we require for soaking will be uh, primarily dictated by the diffusion coefficient and hence the temperature that we are referring to. So, that determines what amount of time we need for uh, carburizing. So, that is all for the time being. Thank you very much.